The bridge between despair and hope is a good night's sleep. Matthew Walker Sleep is something that we all have in common. We all need it. But that's where things start to differ. Some of us struggle to get to sleep or to stay asleep, while others can't get enough of it. Some sleep in the pitch black, while others need a TV or white noise going in the background. Sleep plays a vital role in our health, yet much of the modern world is sleep-deprived. We are used to operating at a suboptimal level, using stimulants like caffeine to get by each day. Whatever our relationship is with sleep, most of us know that it's important. But many people underestimate just how important it is. In Matthew Walker's book, Why We Sleep, he presents everything that we currently know about sleep. In this book, and this summary, we'll cover what is sleep, why it's important, and some tips to improve the quality and quantity of your sleep. Let's start by discussing the two different types of sleep. When you are sleeping, you cycle between REM, or rapid eye movement sleep, and non-REM, or non-rapid eye movement. REM sleep is important because it helps us to recalibrate and fine-tune the emotional circuits of the brain. This is why you feel calm and relaxed after a good night's sleep, and this is also when dreams happen. While non-REM sleep, you experience a sensory blackout, and your cortex relaxes. This allows your brain to work on transferring short-term data and experiences into long-term memory. When you don't get a full 8 hours of sleep, you lose out on chunks of one or both of these cycles, causing harm to your mood, memory, and bodily functions. Next, let's look at what causes sleepiness in the first place. This comes down to circadian rhythm and androzine. Circadian rhythm is something that all living creatures possess. It has been helping humans keep time long before the advent of clocks and allows us to function without sunlight if we have to. Things like body temperature, melatonin production, and adrenazine are all produced in varying amounts according to the cycle that our body is on. An interesting thing about circadian rhythms is that they are very individual. About 40% of the population reaches its peak wakefulness sometime in the morning, another 30% are more energized in the evening, while the last 30% fall somewhere in between, with a slight leaning towards the evening. For the 30% of the people who are night owls, a career outside of the normal 9 to 5 will actually fit your circadian rhythm better, leading to a better fit and likely a more professional result. And the 9 to 5 job is tailored to those who are more energetic in the morning. Adrenazine is the other major factor in the onset of sleepiness. This is a chemical that builds up during the day as we are awake. It gradually builds up and causes the feeling of needing or wanting to sleep that we experience when we are tired or have been awake for more than 12 to 18 hours. This chemical is flushed as you sleep and usually completely purged after 8 hours of restful sleep. The next part of the book deals with why you should get your full 8 hours of sleep. Your body is designed for 7 to 8 hours of good, restful sleep each night. Yet studies have shown that about half of people 30 or younger sleep for 6 hours or less a night, and the stats improving only slightly as people get older. This means that many people in the younger generations are running around performing suboptimally, and while older people can lead to serious health problems because of this issue. In the short term, lack of sleep leads to forgetfulness and impaired memory, a worsening of the ability to focus or control our emotions. Prolonged lack of sleep can lead to serious disorders like insomnia or narcolepsy. If you do develop long-term sleeping habits that are poor, you are more likely to develop cancer, heart disease, issues with your cardiovascular, immune, and reproductive systems, and even a shorter lifespan. There is absolutely nothing that you can do to improve your health more than improving your sleep quality. The quality and quantity of your sleep directly affects your overall health and longevity. How do you improve your sleep? Even if you do suffer from insomnia 
or have struggled to sleep in the past. There are some strategies that will help you develop good sleep habits if practiced over a long enough period of time. Many of these things not only will help you sleep, but have many other health benefits tied to them as well. First, develop a schedule. You should aim to have the same bedtime and wake up time every single day, and this includes weekends. For most of us, this means that we need to go to bed a bit earlier during the week so that we can get our full 8 hours. If you work at 8 a.m. each day, then you just can't get enough sleep and get up in time for work if you aren't shutting out the lights until midnight. Another habit that tends to hurt people's sleep quality is going to bed at 10 p.m. during the week and staying up till midnight or later on the weekends. This throws off your circadian rhythm and your production of melatonin and adrenazine. If every weekend you stay up late and throw off your circadian rhythm, your body can get into a state where it never has enough of the correct chemicals at the correct times, leaving you permanently tired. Next, avoid screen time before bed. Make your bedroom a screen-free environment. No TV, computers, cell phones, etc. These devices can keep you from going to bed on time, and the light that they produce makes it harder for you to find restful sleep. At least an hour before bed, turn off devices like this and find a relaxing activity like reading, journaling, or stretching to prepare yourself for bed. Next, time your meals and caffeine consumption. It can be really hard to sleep on an overly full stomach. Try to give yourself at least three hours after dinner before your bedtime if you can. Stimulants like caffeine should be avoided as much as eight hours before bedtime. And while a nice alcoholic nightcap can be nice, it can only harm your sleep quality. Exercise early. Exercising daily is a great way to help your body sleep better, but not if done within three hours of bedtime. As much as possible, you should give yourself plenty of time to relax, unwind, and let the chemicals produced during a hard workout wear away before trying to get some shut-eye. And lastly, avoid long naps. Afternoon power naps are a good thing, but keep them to a maximum of 45 minutes. Longer than that, they can start to reset your adrenazine and mess with your circadian rhythm. Get enough sleep at night, and your need for long naps will also lessen. Remember, the best bridge between despair and hope is a good night's sleep. You've likely heard, since you were young, how important sleep is. But sometimes it takes a book like this to make you really buy in. While this summary provides a high-level overview of the book, there is so much detail that we couldn't add here that makes this book a great read for anyone wanting to fix, optimize, or overhaul their sleep schedule and habits. We hope you enjoyed our summary of why we sleep. If you have a book, idea, or concept that you'd like to see us animate, please leave your ideas in the comments down below and we'll do our best to turn your suggestions into a video.